we got ourselves a brand new Gas Gas 700, and we're going to show you whether this is just a red KTM or if it packs its own set of surprises, plus how to get monster horsepower out of it. Hey everybody, I'm Chris, and we're in our state-of-the-art dyno facility here at Rottweiler Performance, and we have this brand new Gas Gas 700. Now, this bike to me is absolutely gorgeous. I really like the way it looks, but we wanted to show you guys exactly what happens to this thing when we start chucking stuff at it and how it reacts as, as far as mapping goes and what happens to your air-fuel ratios when you do this and not that or that and not this or these two things together. So, and at the end of it all, we're gonna show you how we get uh, some pretty good horsepower out of this thing too. So. This is a really exciting bike, and as these things evolve throughout the years, we get each and every one of these things in to see how the mapping has changed over the previous model. Now, this particular bike does not have a previous model unless you want to consider the 690 KTM or the 701 Husqvarna uh, as its predecessors, which it pretty much is, but as things evolve and emissions laws evolve in different countries, they tend to change the mapping, so it's our job to go through these things and start figuring out exactly what they've changed, where they've changed it, and to develop maps for you all, for power commanders and things like this, that work really well and that are custom tuned for this model. So we're gonna hit the rev limiter a bunch of times on this baby, and then we're gonna show you guys on our DinoJet software here exactly what happens when we make these changes. So check it out. Okay, we got our runs done and uh, we found out some really interesting things that we want to share with you today in this video. So uh, I want to remind you guys down in the descriptions there are the chapters so you can actually scoot forward to any chapter you want in this video. But I would encourage you to at least watch this first part so you guys can understand exactly what we're doing, how mapping works and how we perform our runs. So the last few runs I did, I did a test to show you uh, exactly what happens when you uh, perform a run where where you whack the throttle open versus using the load function in the dyno. So up here on the screen, we're gonna point out two lines. We're gonna point out this red line here and this blue line here. So this blue line is a run that we performed at 100% throttle, where basically to start the run, we whack the throttle open and you can see it takes this big gulp of air right here and then the fuel starts to catch up. And uh, what happens is you create this lean spot and that's not something you should be really tuning out, you know, we basically modified the numbers in the map to try to, you know, richen that up and get that down. But this isn't anything you should be focusing on. So what we use is the load function on the DinoJet 250i, which is basically a eddy brake that will hold the bike at any given RPM that we tell it to while we get to the given throttle position. So it'll hold uh, the bike at 3000 RPM at 100% throttle until everything stabilizes and then we're able to release uh, the load and start the run. And if you look at this red uh, line right here, this is what happens when you do that. You get a much more stable run and we can actually tune uh, a little bit more efficiently than that. So that's one way that we use uh, to actually tune these bikes because you can't really tune to, you never know when a customer is going to whack the throttle open or not. And that's not really something you should tune to. Uh, you're going to get some really wonky maps doing that. So that's one way we tune. Uh, the other way we tune is we go through, there's a lot of companies out there that will show you um, uh, you know, what they got at 100% throttle. That's nice, um, you know, and you have to show that kind of thing, uh, but they're gonna show you what they got, the horsepower they got at 100% throttle, but the truth of the matter is, you're almost never at 100% throttle. You spend most of your time between 20, 40, and 60% throttle. So what we do is we do runs um, at 10%, 20, 40, 60, 80, and 100% throttle, and then we compare those against 
uh, modified runs of the same throttle ranges. And that allows us to show people, listen, you know, we made, uh, you know, horsepower at all throttle ranges, not just wide open. You know, if you're looking at a, a chart that just shows 100% throttle, you may be losing horsepower at 60% throttle or 40% throttle, and they're not showing it to you. So we do uh, every one of these runs. So if you look at these, this, this is fourth gear, 10%. This is how we label them. This is 10% throttle, 20. I'm just going to pick some random ones here. 40, 60, 80, and 100% throttle. So these are all the horsepower readings from all the different throttle ranges. So 10%, 20, 40, 60, 80, and 100% throttle. Now, what's interesting is down here, these are all the stock air fuel ratios. So basically, bikes are, are, are forced to run most of their low end um, RPM and throttle ranges at 14.7 AFR. It's not harmful, but it's a little on the leaner side compared to what makes power, which is around 13.2 air fuel ratio. You're kind of missing out on a lot of horsepower when, when they're that lean. And so what we found is if you look at this, 10% throttle, 20, 40, 60, all these uh, throttle percentages up to about 80% are all very lean across the board, almost to red line. Now, if you look at 80% uh, throttle and 100% throttle, those two are allowed to come out of closed loop. Um, basically, you're allowed to do that because you can't keep a bike at 14.7 AFR at wide open throttle. It's harmful. So they're allowed to come out of that and run a little bit richer. So you can see 80 right there is a little bit richer. And then 100% uh, throttle, this brown line is even richer than that. Now, the target at which most people shoot for when tuning a bike is 13.2 air fuel ratio. And that is regarded as the best fuel ratio for making power and the least fuel consuming. There might be, uh, you know, if you, you might be able to go a point richer and actually make more power, but you're making maybe 2% more power, 5% more power, but using 20% more fuel. So it starts to just drop off as far as how efficient that is. Now, if this is a race bike and it's a short course and you're racing the thing, sure, tune it to make as much power as you can. You're not concerned whatsoever about uh, fuel consumption, uh, so long as you don't run out. Now, in desert racing or that sort of thing, yeah, you're, you're concerned about fuel consumption because you've got X amount of distance between fuel stops. So you might want to lean that out a little bit and focus on a, you know, a, a slightly leaner, but uh, uh, not so lean uh, air fuel ratio range. So these are the, the techniques that we use and, and the principles that we use to tune a bike, to measure things, to look at things, and then know where to bring that to. So after this, um, we're going to show you exactly what happens when we start throwing different things at it without tuning. And then in the end, we're going to show you how to make monster horsepower and how we get uh, this bike to the, one of the, to the best map that you can possibly make for it and take bits and pieces out of different maps that make more horsepower than another one, piece them together to make your ultimate map. So stay tuned in this video and we're going to show you some really cool stuff. Okay, now we're going to show you exactly what happens when you just throw in a Rottweiler intake only and don't tune it with a Power Commander 6. Now, on other bikes, you can actually get away with that. The 790s and on up, those bikes are a lot smarter and they have the power, the computing power, to actually self-tune themselves. So you can put on a Rottweiler intake and not do any mapping and they will actually self-tune themselves, but they'll do it to 14.7 air fuel ratio, which is what they're programmed to stay at. So we've done previous videos before that show you on the 790 Duke exactly what happened when we threw a bunch of fuel at it, but left the stock O2s plugged in and didn't put in the the uh, fueling dongles. And it basically, uh, we threw a bunch of fuel at it. It got really rich and then the bike just fixed itself and got right back to where it was supposed to be. Then we took that fuel out, it got really lean and then it fixed itself again. So we showed how powerful those bikes are. Conversely, the 690s, the 700, this bike and the 701s, they don't self-tune themselves. Now they've got narrowbound O2s, but they only use it to basically decipher whether this bike has traveled outside of its desired parameters. And if it does, and if it does for long enough, it's just gonna show you an engine light, which is essentially harmless, but that's really the only point of that O2 uh, on this bike. So what we found, and we're gonna show you on the screen, is that uh, you can run a Rottweiler intake system, but it does lean it out in some spots, um, not dangerously so, but enough to where you're probably gonna to want uh, to put on a Power Commander 6. I'm not trying to sell you on one, uh, but that's the point of this video is we wanna show you exactly what happens. So we're gonna show a baseline run of 10% throttle. So we're gonna pick the last one we did, and then we're gonna go here and show you the baseline run of 10%. Roughly the same, negligible. So 10% throttle, just fine. 
then we're going to go to 20% throttle on our baseline run, and then we're going to compare that to 20% throttle uh, with the Rottweiler intake system. Again, essentially the same. Uh, the throttle positions are very uh, uh, low, so not letting a ton of air in, not a big deal. Now we're going to jump to 40% throttle. These are your baseline runs, and this is 40% throttle with the Rottweiler intake. So we start to get a little leaner here. This is not too dangerous, but it, it's probably going to make the bike a little stally on the bottom. We do have uh, some customers that have installed these intakes without a Power Commander 6, and they said, you know, on the bottom end, basically putting through things, they tend to get a little bit stally, and this is why, this blue line right here. Uh, so it starts to get a little bit leaner at low, uh, lower throttle openings or higher throttle openings um, uh, the more open you go. So we'll close those. We'll move on to 60, show you 60, 80, and 100. This is uh, your baseline. Now we start to get really lean at 60. We don't like this at all. Um, so basically, if you don't tune this bike um, and you want to take it above 60% throttle, this is what you're looking at. This is, this is quite lean right here, 17.43. Is this going to melt your engine? No. Um, but you really wouldn't want to stay there for a long period of time. Uh, and so as we get up to, say, 80% throttle uh, baseline, and we have 80% throttle, Rottweiler take again, it looks like everything above 40% throttle starts to get pretty lean. And then we're gonna look at 100 uh, baseline. This is our best run right here. We label our best runs. And then right here. So uh, this starts to get a little bit better because at 100% throttle uh, stock, they allow you to be a bit richer, but it's still pretty lean. You don't wanna be this lean at 100% throttle. Now you're still making more horsepower. If you look at a lot of these, you're still making more power because it's letting a lot more air in. But there's so much more potential, and we'll show you later in this video when you actually add a Power Commander 6 and start and load in one of our maps that we made on this bike right here that's in this video. Um, and you're going to be a lot happier. We're going to show you that there's massive horsepower jumps when you combine those two. All right, now we're going to show you how we begin the mapping. So we've got an exhaust system on here, uncorked, and we have uh, our Rottweiler intake system bolted on as well. So we've opened up the exhaust, we've opened up the intake, and now we put a Power Commander 6 on, and we're going to begin our mapping. And typically, what we'll do is we'll start with a map that we feel is as close uh, as we can get, which is obviously going to be something from the 690 or 701. It's the same engine, similar, but we don't know if on this gas gas they've tweaked things a little bit. So we're going to start there. It's definitely going to be better than stock, and then we're going to make our tweaks from there. But in this section, what I want to show you is exactly uh, what happens uh, uh, between the baseline and running this map. And then after this, in the next section, we're going to show you how we tweak that map uh, to 13.2. And then furthermore, how we tweak that to the best power we can get. So we're going to start out here at 10% uh, throttle right here. So we're going to bring up 10% 10 10 throttle baseline. And then we're going to show you what 10% throttle looks like on the 690 map. So you can see this blue line is uh, much better. It's still a little bit wavy on the 690. I'm sure we have this perfect. But on this bike, it's kind of throwing off here and there, probably by some different mapping changes that are coming out of the stock. So remember, Power Commander 6 is a piggyback. They're basically just adding or subtracting numbers that are coming out of, basically values that are coming out of the Power Commander 6. Uh, so whatever values are coming out, it's just adding a percentage. It's blind. It doesn't know. It doesn't care what that uh, basically bandwidth is. It just takes that bandwidth with basically the wider the bandwidth, the more fuel it squirts, the narrower, the less fuel it squirts. It just takes that bandwidth and just widens it by a certain percentage. Doesn't care, doesn't even know what it is. It just does that. Um, so whatever's not coming out from underneath it is what we have to map to. So if you look at 10% throttle, uh, a little bit better, um, but you can see we lost a little bit of horsepower here uh, on the top by being richer. So it tends to apparently like a little bit leaner. So you can see right here, it loses uh, a little bit of uh, horsepower right here, uh, richening it up. But 10% throttle, it's, it's, it's a very difficult throttle position to kind of map anything at. Uh, we don't really um, take much of this into consideration. This could be, it, we could have had the throttle open at a slightly lower uh, uh, throttle position than this one right here. It's very, very finite um, at those points. So we don't really uh, pay much attention to that at these low throttle ranges. Now let's look at 20% throttle. So we're going to come down here and look at our final round on 20. This is our 20% throttle baseline. And uh, right here is our 20% throttle baseline with the 690 map. So you can see we make some really good horsepower here, at least a uh, little over two at 4,000 RPM or just under 4,000 RPM. So that's nice. But you can see right here, the map, the 690 map, 
for some odd reason, starts to get a little bit lean. You can see we start to taper off some horsepower here. So the point of this is, is borrowing maps from bikes that are close. Some companies do this. They say, well, this is, they just assume it's the same thing. They don't actually spend the time and put it on the dyno. They hand it to you. Well, if they are, this is kind of what's happening. So this is a good example of why we get every single bike and test and tune um, with that model. So let's look at 40%. So we'll find our final run at 40%. Uh, right here and you can see same kind of thing really good gains right there uh, but it starts to get a little weird right here and kind of lean on the top so this is obviously a very different kind of map up here um, so we think um, this thing actually um, got a bit uh, we uh, I think maybe the 690 was a bit richer in this area uh, so we lean that out to make more power and and so on this bike it looked like it leaned it out a little bit which obviously cost us some horsepower right there so uh, we're going to skip to 100% throttle just to kind of cut to the chase in this section and kind of show you exactly what happens up there. And we, again, we label uh, them the best. Now, this one turned out pretty good. 100% uh, throttle is actually uh, quite an improvement over stock. But again, we're going to tweak this map. We already have, and we've built some, uh, a really good map for this bike that matches uh, the mapping that comes out of it. So in the next section, we're going to show you exactly what happens when we start making tweaks and shoot for 13.2 AFR. All right, now we're going to show you exactly what happens when we take that map and modify it for this exact model uh, over this exact mapping. So we're going to show you the same two runs, the baseline and the 690 map, and then we're going to show you exactly what happened when we made tweaks to that map to get it to uh, adjust to the 700. So we're going to start out at uh, 20% uh, right here. So this is our last run at 20%. This is our last run at 20%. Uh, with the 690 map, you can see, uh, remember we talked about some good gains here, but a loss here because it got rich. Now we're going to show you 20% after we made our tweaks to this map to build a 700 map. So you can see this, this nice, now we're cooking with grease. So now you can see this nice smooth curve right here at 20% throttle. So that's like cruise range. That's when you're just kind of like cruising down the highway or putting around. We still see a good gain on the bottom here. But you can see right here where uh, the 690 map started to kind of taper off and get leaner and leaner and leaner and lose horsepower, which is basically matching this line right here. You can see that shooting for 13.2 right here, air fuel ratio, this is a really good line that we made. Uh, you can see what that does is that carries us over and really starts to make some good horsepower. So we've got some good gains throughout, uh, no losses, and we've, we've built a great map at 20% throttle. So we're going to shoot for 40% throttle, which is uh, basically beginning to get on it. Um, there's 40%. We showed you this to you before. Same thing. You had this kind of lean spike at the end. And then 40% throttle tweaking this map for the 700. Again, great map right here. We're going to highlight that guy. Uh, we got everything at 13.2. You can see stock right here. We still made some good gains with the 690 map. But again, we had this kind of funky lean spot. You can see what happens right here when we when we richen that up and get it right where we want it. It makes a nice, clean, smooth arc right here that stays uh, quite quite a bit above stock. We're looking at uh, <laughs> we're looking at six horsepower at 40% throttle uh, at 4,000 RPM. Six horsepower to the tire. That is fantastic. And remember, that's with the Rottweiler intake and this uh, muffler right here. So um, that's literally just starting to roll on it and you know coming on an on ramp. Uh, you know, on a freeway or, or uh, you know, uh, accelerating out of a corner, that kind of thing. So really good power here. So you can see what happens uh, when you borrow a map from something else that you think is the same. And, uh, and when you actually make uh, tweaks to that map for this particular model. So now we're going to show you 60. Um, and if you've seen enough, you can skip to the next section. If you want to see every throttle range, stay, stay with us. Again, we showed this to you before. We still made good gains there, but it's, you know, the map is kind of rough. And uh, we're going to go to 60% throttle mapped. We, st we Look at this. We made this nice little kind of pocket right here. So again, stock is, is red. The 690 map is blue, and that's kind of all over the place. And then our final map for the 701, shooting for 13.2. Now, remember, we have a better map than this that so we're going to show you in the next section that we tweaked. We're going to tell you how we got there. Um, but this uh, map shooting for 13.2, you can see that right across the board, uh, makes some really good smooth lines there. So at, uh, you know, 5... Uh, 5,500 RPM, we're making, gosh, what, that's seven more horsepower right there. That's nothing to sneeze at. Uh, that's to the tire as well. That's not to the crank. That equals about nine or 10 to the crank. 
Um, so that's a pretty good one there. Now let's move on uh, to 80. This is the 690 map at 80. And still made good power there, but uh, once we tweak that, um, see now we're in about in the same range right here. We actually, roughly the same, but we're actually using less fuel to do it. You can remember what I was saying earlier before that sometimes more fuel really doesn't do anything at all. So if you look at uh, our map, the 690, for some reason, 80% throttle got richer right here, and it really is right behind this green line. It really didn't make any more power. So you're just wasting fuel to make the same amount of power. So we, again, uh, modified this map for the 700, and we got a nice clean line out of it, and uh, you know less differences as we open up the throttle. So now, finally, let's uh, go on to 100% throttle. So we're going to click this one, marked as our best. This is the 690 map right here, and 100% throttle at 13.2. Again, we're using less fuel and almost accomplishing the same thing. Most runs uh, back to back, you're gonna find little anomalies here and there. Um, we, could, we could look at these other two uh, right here. There's 100% throttle, 100% throttle. Um, actually, this one here would be the one to compare it to uh, right here. So we're actually making about the same amount of power uh, with that one. So. Uh, basically, you can see uh, in this section how we show that taking a map, putting it in there is not really the best uh, thing to do. Get the bike, get the exact model, the exact year, uh, because the same models they can change throughout the years, and then uh, you know fix that fueling and, and then shoot for your 13.2. All right, in this section, what we're going to do is we're going to show you exactly what happens when we start making tweaks to that 13.2 map that we built. So that's our first target. That's pretty much what you shoot for. Then what we do is, if you look here on the screen, um, we've got some folders. We're not going to get into them, but we do the same runs, and we'll tweak those runs 5% leaner, 5% richer, 10% leaner, 10% richer, and then we'll try to see and identify exactly maybe where this bike likes some of those enrichments and enleanments better. And sometimes like maybe from 6,000 RPM up to a red line, it does like it richer, five or 10% richer, uh, but it doesn't really care anywhere else. It's all the same everywhere else. So what we'll do is we'll build, we'll, we'll, we'll realize and, and take notes of where that is actually uh, making a difference. And then we'll adjust our final map just in those areas. So what we do is identify exactly where this bike likes it leaner or richer, depending on the throttle position and RPM. And then we'll just make those tweaks all over the map to try to squeeze the most horsepower uh, uh, that we can out of this bike and also create the smoothest power band. Um, so we're gonna show you a comparison against our 13.2 map that we just compared against uh, the 690 map. And then we're gonna show you, uh, we're gonna do a comparison here against the final map. So spoiler, not a whole lot of uh, changes up until about 50% throttle. So um, we didn't really see anything up until 50% throttle. It really liked 13.2, so we didn't do anything. And for time purposes, I'm just gonna show you from 60 on up. So uh, we're gonna show you 60% throttle right here and then we had made some tweaks and not a whole lot of gains. You can see we made the entire um, uh, thing richer just by a little bit right here. And it seemed to kind of like it way at the top and it's not much, um, you know, we're talking a horsepower, nothing to sneeze at, sure, that's great. Um, but it did make it a little bit better. So we were satisfied with that. Now we're gonna show you 80% throttle right here um, and what we tweaked here. And you can see we went a little bit richer on this one, it seemed to like it. Again, uh, minimal gains, but still something. A horsepower is a horsepower, I'll take it. Now we're gonna show you 100% throttle where we saw our best gains right here. So this is 100% throttle at the 13.2 map, and this is our tweet map uh, right here. And you can see we make some pretty good gains right here. And we're looking at, uh, gosh, that's about two and a half horsepower at uh, 5,000 RPM to the tire. So I'm pretty satisfied with that. And if you can see this blue line right here, basically just kind of like, it keeps going and, and runs really well. So just making that little tweak right here, the bike seemed to really like it. Um, now runs can go up and down and you can get anomalies, but uh, we picked the most consistent runs and consistently we saw this is better. So just that little tweak uh, over the six, or I'm sorry, the 13.2 map uh, got this thing that much horsepower. So now you can see the steps that we take to kind of get from one place to another to another, and, and then we can start picking pieces of good maps and piecing them together to really make a fantastic map. If most 
dyno uh, operators are, are, if it's just a one-off bike, they're going to get you real close and, you know, they, they usually charge you, you know, a set price and they're done. They're not going to do anything like this because we're giving these maps to hundreds, if maybe thousands of people over time. Uh, we want to make sure that they're absolutely as perfect as they can get. And we've always done that throughout time. So, okay, guys, if you made it this far, you're ready for the most exciting part of the video. So we're going to show you a culmination of everything we've done throughout all these runs. Um, but we're only going to show you 100% throttle. We've already shown you all the, the throttle ranges and it would just take too long. So what we want to do is show you 100% throttle and the graduations in power that we we're able to make with the various modifications on this bike. So we've minimized uh, air fuel ratios. We, you've already seen those. We've only thrown up the 100% throttle ranges and we've added in torque. And so you can see right here, these dotted lines are our torque lines. We didn't want them there before because it gets a little bit muddled on the screen. So we're going to start by basically showing you baseline. So baseline here, uh, the horsepower uh, is a solid line. The torque is a dotted line here. And this is our, our starting gate. This is basically bone stock uh, 700. Then we'll move into uh, completely mapped with a Power Commander 6 stock intake and a muffler. So you can see just mapping alone Power Commander 6 and a muffler, it does a great job. This is a really good curve and, and anybody should be happy with that but you're still missing out on quite a bit, and that's the Rottweiler intake. So when we threw on the Rottweiler intake, you can see we made this big jump up to this green line here. Um, you can see the gap between the two, and that is running the 690 map. And so you can see what happens when we throw a different map in there. And then when we go to our final tuned map for the 700, open muffler, Power Commander 6, tuned to perfection with a Rottweiler intake system, you're looking at this line right here. And uh, that is a massive difference uh, between stock. We're gonna show you those two lines right there. That is really impressive. That's why we've had a lot of success on this bike for making power. And if you look, I mean, where you ride the bike, where you cruise is right about here. And we're talking 35 horsepower to 43 horsepower, where you cruise the bike, that's eight horsepower to the tire, just at cruise range. That's not even cracking the throttle open. That's just cruising. Uh, and you can see on the way up, it pretty much maintains a really healthy gap. Now these numbers get a little bit jumbled when you've got torque in there, but if we're reading horsepower stock, it's 50 at uh, 5,750 RPM. And uh, we've got a solid eight plus horsepower uh, pretty much across the board. Um, so. Everybody, this is exactly um, what to expect with this bike. You know, intake system, Rottweiler intake system, muffler, Power Commander 6 tune. That is the go-to combination on this, uh, on these models, the 690, the 71, and the 700 gas gas. They all pretty much respond the same, and we get gobs of horsepower to this. So, thanks everybody for watching. I know this has been a long video, but I really hope you guys enjoyed the informational aspect of it. And uh, if you did, please hit the like button and subscribe and do all that stuff I'm supposed to ask you to do because it helps us tremendously. We're trying to make more videos and, uh, and, and grow this whole thing so we can bring more great products to you guys. So again, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Dude. Okay. Sucks. I like these.